guys welcome back to my channel I'm back again with another video today I thought I would give a bit of advice while I do my makeup I'm doing my makeup because I need to shoot another video and I just thought I would just kill two birds with one stone you feel me dog so I just thought that yeah it's third year right I mean you guys are in third year this is for my third years mm, if you're in second year you could watch this as well because you know you're gonna be in third year after this but this video is mainly for my third years. Quick disclaimer guys, in case you guys don't know, I'm going to tell you a little secret about me. I don't really enjoy shooting Get Ready With Me's. I just do it to kill two birds with one stone just so I can get one video out of the way in preparation for another video. Anyway, the purpose of this video is to give advice to those of you that are in third year, about to start your dissertation. You have picked your dissertation topics, you have... I mean, all of that is done. I would have done this video earlier to give advice on choosing your topics and whatnot, but I didn't want to like... What well, I didn't think about it. Now that I have thought about it, I realised that that would I don't want to influence <laughs> the way people go about choosing their topics because yeah, just you you need to pick that on your own. Anyway, it's February. In fact, it's basically March now. But by the time this video comes out, it will definitely be March. Will it be March? I don't know. It's time to write. Do you understand? Um, it's time to write your dissertation. And I just think there are different pointers. Okay, the way I'm going to structure. Okay. <laughs> bloody hell I'm all over the place the way I'm going to structure this video is to give you advice on actual writing of your dissertation and then give you advice on just the things that you kind of should be doing while you're in third year and whatnot um besides just your dissertation right anyway so you guys have picked your topics it's time to start writing the first advice that I have for you guys is now that you've picked your topics and you want to start writing um I think you guys should read di similar dissertations someone else could say no don't do that because that would influence your writing you might copy don't copy like I'm not saying go and like copy don't copy what anyone is doing do not copy a single line of someone else's dissertation unless it is an actual quote from another text like something that they reference themselves obviously that's not copying because they've also taken from another text i think reading other people's dissertations that have the similar title to yours really helps you know how to structure your dissertation how to introduce new points how to link things together blah 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 it could even give you new ideas like you know it could give you new ideas because they might have carried out some research and found certain things themselves and cool you might not reference their work because it might not be credible for you to reference as a point of other study has found because you know you're referencing someone else's dissertation i don't know if that's a thing i don't think it is but it is it could give you ideas that oh like this is a this is what another research could show or this is you know what i mean you know what i mean just a, a contrasting argument to what you're said to what you're researching to what you're hoping to find that's something I, that really helped me and i only read two one and first class dissertations and it's very important because even reading those two different grades of dissertations helps you to see the differences between what makes a first and what makes a two one do you understand i got a two one in my dissertation i got a two one at uni overall like i'm happy about that because i can't know uni was a joke thing <laughs> uni was a joke thing nope. Number two is take your time. That sounds a bit silly to say because, mate, we have deadlines, body. What do you mean take our time? Like, there's no time. <laughs> we don't have time to be taking time. Have you guys ever heard the saying, more haste, less speed? That literally means the faster you do something when you're rushing, the slower it will take you to get to the goal you want to get to because you're going to keep making mistakes, which means you're going to have to keep going back to changing things. Don't rush writing. It's not a competition. Don't look at anybody else. Some people finish... Fam, when I was... <laughs> I study psychology for those of you that don't know. For us, we had to obviously do the protocol or whatever that was called. Basically write a fake this or, or like you're in like a basically rough dissertation and you know, it gets marked. And for us, that was the only time that our lecturers was able to help us with our feedback. Can you imagine? That, that was only for psychology, you know, because other, other students actually got help. They were able to go back and get help from the supervisors we were the only ones as far as i'm aware that was not allowed a single help from our supervisors once we start our actual dissertation during that time people even before that was even due people had already started the experiments people had already started um they've already got results and it's just like what they've already completed their questionnaires and you know we had to design like dissertation it's, it's all you all that work is you so designing your own questionnaire getting it out to people getting people to actually do it getting it back starting to write your results section people started that before christmas bro i was so 
shocked because me i had to actually change my dissertation topic that was a big setback but the point i'm trying to make is don't look at what other people are doing do things at your own pace it's not a race some people submitted that they're so bad now some people buy now it's now the date today is february the 21st some people's dissertations were submitted do you understand so my point is yeah you can rush that's not rushing though they probably took the things at their own pace as well but yeah you can look at other people doing stuff so quickly and think oh my gosh yeah i got i need to pick up the pace but i'm taking the pace no you're not taking the pace you're doing stuff at your own pace and you're doing stuff in a way that is good for you so that's very important don't rush but at the same time don't be slow set yourself targets it's very important so obviously dissertations are usually broken down into different parts you know your intro your method your oh mate do i remember we had the in, we had the, you got your abstract you got your intro you got your your method and within your method you had well this is for psychology anyway i don't know some people just did some of you just write thesis and just literature reviews but this is for experiments you had your your um abstract your freaking what you call that thing what you call that thing oh so after your intro so you got your intro so you got your so you got your abstract your intro then you got your method within your method you got your procedure your materials your flipping out all of that in it all of that stuff uh, I, okay quick detour for those of you that aren't psychology students i mean don't fast forward this video because this is still helpful because you might still be doing something that's just for those of you that are psychology students right who need to write a dissertation on an experiment that you've done where's my foundation i wrote my abstract last i wrote my abstract last i think writing your procedure is is the is the easiest part because you know what you're gonna do obviously if you haven't done your experiment yet which you should have because it's actually february then again did i even have my results by now i think i did i think yeah come on my eyes not much yeah because it was due in april i don't know you know i can't remember i think it's very smart to write your method first it's so easy because all you're saying is what you did that's all you're saying is what you did and make sure you use your lecture notes like I don't know how many lectures are recorded but if you're a psychology student and those of you that aren't there's that you do get help and advice on how to structure your what you're writing like how to even write out this particular part so for example the data analysis section of your method there's a way you have to write it like there's a way you have to write f equals to this and that all of that stuff there fam use that don't just say i did this you know what i mean so actually structure your stuff the way you might structure it i think it's good to start your dissertation like as if you're ready to submit i know some people do the whole rough copy stuff i think you know you just got your stuff all everywhere organize yourself i think keep it all in one document do you understand like lay out your titles first and then start filling them up don't now come and do your intro in one document and then you know write this part of your intro here just so you're gonna you're gonna copy and paste it into this bit later D that's just long i think just organize yourself keep it all in one document duplicate that document and be working on it so in, even though i just said keep everything into one document i'm gonna kind of contradict myself when it comes to your references create a separate document as you are starting as you are starting <laughs> your dissertation have another document open for your references because i find it so silly personally obviously everyone works differently but for me this is hella silly when people now after writing their whole dissertation go and now start doing their references doing their references or doing the whole essay anything any work that people do i find it so weird when you now do your references last i find that so it's so backwards that's working hard not smart like i don't it doesn't make sense while you're writing pieces you're obviously reading and stuff so why don't you just once you've read something and you're putting it into your dissertation put the reference down do you understand in your, in your second document put the reference down go back do your next reading for the next thing put that reference down so when you finish your dissertation your references are finished you haven't missed out a single reference i think it's so important because if you don't do it in that way you're gonna have to you think you're gonna you think dissertation you don't do it over the course of a couple weeks like this stuff can take two months of hard work writing 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 your little words maybe one word you took or one little one sentence is already a reference so you think that when you now finish your whole dissertation everything you're reading you you'll be remembering where you got it from no way right that's not happening then when you finish just copy it and paste it into your dissertation document um or you could do it at the bottom but the reason why i don't do it in the same document is that it kind of it twangs me <laughs> it fools me it makes me think i have way more words than i do and then after that 
is I'm just kind of like that's I think I did I think I did my in the same document and every time I wanted to do my word count I have to scroll highlight only the things I want to check and then you know be like oh I thought I had 7,000 words but I've only got like 4,000 something so um I think doing it in a separate document but don't forget to paste it mm -hmm. if you like go and submit your dissertation without putting your references there that's like a big that 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 just forget forget it now speak on the topic of references right um read <laughs> read i can't I, oh my gosh i went through university without reading i can't lie all my assignments and stuff i don't know i just twanged uni i can't i, I really can't tell you guys how i got a t1 like the only person i could understand i said understand the only person i could understand how much it just doesn't make sense is my friend jennifer because we were both just it was a play like university I, I didn't i didn't take it that seriously but that's not even that I, I did not take it seriously i just didn't i just wasn't a hard worker i can't describe it i just didn't i did the bare minimum or you know a bit more than the bare minimum and just ensure that i did the right thing so i i, I really went through uni without like like without reading 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 for each assignment i'll read but no i didn't do that do you know what i mean i might just quickly skim read one thing just skim read it find one quick line slap it in there find a way to link it skim read another thing find another word just slap it in there just just to that say i have references but that that way of doing things no way i could not apply that same way of doing things to my dissertation like i couldn't i had to read i read so many articles and this is why this is why reading someone else's dissertation, like other published dissertations on your school website, because I imagine, I said school, uni website, I imagine that your tutors would have given you links to show you like exemplary dissertations. And, you know, reading other people's dissertations, I saw the difference between, I read the third, I read the third dissertations, those that got thirds, I read those that got two twos, I read those that got two ones, and I read the first. And one thing I can 100% say is they flipping read so i said you know what i have to read like you need to read as in literally every second sentence should be especially in your intro and discussion i don't know that's what i'm saying i don't know how you guys' dissertations are structured in other places whether you don't have all discussions and that obviously if you're doing a literature review i don't think it's the same i don't think it's the same process of writing but nonetheless if especially for doing a literature review you need to bloody read mate but for whatever dissertation style you are writing listen the reading is so important that was the difference between a first and a two one how much reading they did and how you're able to be synoptic how you're able to be how you're able to be coherent in your writing linking two points using points to support your argument but also using other like when i say points using evidence and other people's findings and just other points it doesn't have to be even evidence I don't, to, I don't know how to put this into a sentence. I can't, I can't brace on what I'm trying to say. When you're reading, yeah, it's, when I'm saying reading and put reading, it doesn't have to be the results of that person's work. Do you understand? So you might be reading um, Bowlby and Ainsworth's stuff, yeah? Um, um, flipping experiment on the strange situation. My psychologist, y'all bitches know what I'm talking about. But before Ainsworth produced her findings for her strange situation experiment, she referenced other people's work do you understand she referenced other people's ideas she referenced other people's so when i say referencing and reading i'm not saying it's only what ainsworth found is what you should put in your dissertation ainsworth would have had a whole introduction and a whole discussion where every single sentence is someone else's idea and this person said this and even with this this contradicts this and that because this beck found this and that and you know through beck's work of 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 attachment theory in fact if you do attachment but let's just you know okay through bobby's work of attachment theory um he suggested that blah 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 blah. also um fam fam like hey oh uh, listen you need to be synoptic dissertation what they love get everything from everywhere not just compile it together but when you're synoptic and coherent that's sexy you are two one and up that is what they need you can't just name drop and just drop things when you can weave these things into your writing that is so important 
so for example attachment if you're a psychologist you know what i'm talking about but if you're not just listen in it attachment theory study of how children become attached to their caregiver it's so simple do you understand aims with the distraint situation she put kids in a room the, the, you know the caregiver which is the mother would leave come back in you leave, another stranger comes in the leave blah 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 that's Ainsworth from her experiment that's what she did do you understand so you can even you can even even in your discussion let's say you let's say you, you did a little study along something along those lines of you know creating some sort of strange situation or something but it wasn't a strange situation just something you get me whatever your experiment was you can reference Ainsworth's method, not necessarily her finding, but even with Ainsworth's method, Ainsworth's, Ainsworth's method was based off somebody else's, or she had ideas from somewhere else, she would have said, you know, according to Bowlby's attachment theory, you know, this and that, and Bowlby suggested that this and, ah, guy, everyone just links everything, I can't even, it's getting too much, I can't, listen, let me do my makeup before my, my concealer creases. I know I wasn't going to talk to you guys about anything, but um, I normally use, for my lighter under base, I normally, uh, under base? <laughs> for my lighter under eyes, so obviously right now I've just used um, L'Oreal, LA Girl, I said L'Oreal, LA Girl and Warm Honey. That's what I used to conceal, and then I go lighter with C10, this is Revolution Concealer, but I want to go lighter. You feel me? No? I can't even show you guys. Can you guys even see? Like, I want to go lighter. This is C10, this is C8.5. Anyway, this is C10 right there. It's C8.5 and the reason why I use this is because I want to start using this it's so white but it's more yellow the C10 is a bit pink but warm honey already has that pinkish undertone so let's see how this looks I really want a bright under eye this is hella bright dummy if you're watching this you know you want to say how we get bright bright under eye this is how you get C10 guy I feel like all my thoughts are just going hoo ha all over the place but that's what I'm saying with the referencing thing and the reading. Obviously, you guys know, those of you that know will just be like, oh yeah, this is common sense. But some people, they're going to really, some of you are really struggling with the decision. Any opportunity you get to get someone else's work, listen, take it. Like, take it. Honestly, this is great. If you guys got what I'm trying to say, that was so higgy haga, but it's not only the results. So, when you read someone else's article and it you you see them referencing still their references steal it <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say yeah cool this so listen i think that was the one part of uni that i really didn't like but i actually enjoyed it. at the same time it's weird because when it starts at first when you're doing your dissertation and it starts to come together it's, it's annoying it's just like oh, when you're starting your ideas are still vague and you're thinking can i really do this i can't even like when i when the whole idea of the station came of course when it's like early third year you know it's all hypothetical hypothetical when it comes to actually doing it finding your, your results and guys i hate it junior you know i can't even lie so the fact i got a 2-1 in that shit you can do it too mate you could do it mate you could do it because when it's all when it's all being said and it's all being introduced to you guys it's still introductory it's still it's a joke it's not serious it's not real so they're talking about this station this station this station it, it doesn't it doesn't hit you until it's time to write and you're actually going to question yourself uh, like am i actually capable of writing this like can i actually can i actually do this but you can you actually can and that's why i said keep everything in one doc in one document keep it all in one place so that when you're going back to see your progress and to see how it's coming together it's all on that one file you're actually seeing the body of your dissertation form let me tell you something some people have actually lost their dissertations you need to save your work as you go. This is this is this is common sense. I shouldn't even I, I shouldn't even have to say these words. I shouldn't even have to say this, but you need to save your work as you go along because you do. <laughs> duplicate your work. Either duplicate the file or every time you save it, re-email it to yourself. E like shit happens. Guys, I know people that have lost or not I don't know anyone directly, but I know of people, I've heard of people losing the dissertations i think i'll just have you <laughs> i can't lie you mean to tell me that that whole dissertation that i've been writing it's done it's gone that's it it's also barry on the oti shelling what's the song i've lost it it's gone <laughs> i'm not even joking you can actually you can self-harm that shit can make you crazy do not be in that situation where you it's clumsiness save your work as you go along be emailing it to yourself i got close friends in it we emailed our work to each other from like from time to time obviously i've emailed it to myself better but there's sometimes i'll be like listen jane i've sent you my work 
you got like just you never know because imagine your email even wipes anything can happen you need to have that work save it on a usb stick save it on your file upload it to one drive. this is i'm telling you listen don't lose your dissertation in it. I don't even need to go on about that, but save your work as you go along. Still sticking to the topic of friends. What me and my friends did, which was very helpful, was that we proofread our work as we went along, like each other's work. Obviously proofread your work as you go along, but like that's common sense. I don't imagine I have to even say that. But have your friends proofread your work as you go along. Do you understand? So let's say you complete one section, just get your friend to read it, innit? Like, just uh, like read the section, please. Like, just see how it is. You don't want to, cause you don't want. You know, it takes time to complete your dissertation. So, you, I feel like even though I said you don't want to do things where, you know, you finish the whole thing and then you have to go back. It's good to take a couple steps forward, one step back, go check over it. A couple steps forward, look over your shoulder again, go check over it. You don't want to now finish your diss so, and then get someone to read the whole thing. Cause first of all, that person ain't reading the whole thing intricately. Of course they could, but. Some people, that's long, fam. You're coming to tell me you want me to read your whole dissertation. Like, I ain't got time for that. I've got my own dissertation to do. <laughs> do you understand? So, be getting people to read your dissertation as you go along. Personally, I think it'll be good to get someone else who is on your course because they know what to expect. Obviously, if you don't feel comfortable because people might steal your ideas, it doesn't matter. The whole point is just to ensure. Just get someone who is very literate and they're good at writing to read your dissertation as you go along rather than completing your whole dissertation and expecting someone to read the whole thing afterwards because, mate, even they won't read it. It'll be harder to spot mistakes in such a large document than, than a document that isn't <laughs> so large. Obviously, I feel like dissertation season is a very selfish season for some reason that I can't understand. I'm not gonna act like I don't get it, but I don't know, me and my friends were just like, I don't, I've seen me and my friends, but it's just me and Jennifer. We're the only ones who really, from my friendship group, who studied, um, who studied psychology. So we're on the same course, we should, like third year, we had the exact same modules. Obviously, our dissertations were two completely different dissertations, but we would always advise each other on certain things through our dissertation. Don't isolate yourself during your dissertation. It's a very hard time. Like it's a very hard time. People lose hair. <laughs> Insomnia kicks in. Like you're really stressed out. You're not. Don't isolate yourself. Still go link your friends, what do you mean? Still have nights where you don't just drink. <laughs> you know, you just get a little rosé, pop some. Have it like, I get it, be on it. But you know you can have a night off. It's, relax, take it easy. Take it easy, guys. It's not like a sip is the end of the world, but chill. Okay, still enjoy yourself because it's third year. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into that side of third year. You get me, the enjoy, you get me? Because it's the end of uni. But you need to still have a life. Like, it's not that deep. If you guys want to go to the cinema, you can. Even though, yeah, you're, it's this old time. No, I've got to go to the library. You don't have to live in the library, guys. Like, it's, take it easy. Do you understand? Get your friends. Still spend time with your friends. So the times when me, like, my friend Jennifer, I keep, Jen, I hope you don't want me just saying your name on camera. Like, obviously, they met you, though. Get me. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the times when we just, we just chill. We just chill, like all of us in the house, me, my friend, Jane, and Reti, Swayla, we'll just chill, we'll have a day where we just chill. Maybe in the morning we'll wake up and we'll do some work, but that evening we're like, okay, let's all link up, have, watch a movie, because you need to keep sane, like, some people's this was due in about April, I think it, it's April, May, it's now March, so it's time for you to submit. And I know it could be a hard time, it could be a very stressful time. Still got to eat, still go meet your boyfriends and girlfriends. You know, still link your friends, like, still party. Who says you can't party in Fergie? Listen, that whole mentality of I'm in Fergie now, you don't better throw that and live in. Listen, mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, another piece of advice that I want to give is that you should utilize your supervisor. Those of you that have access to supervisors who are willing, who are allowed, I wouldn't even say willing because they're always willing to help, but ours weren't allowed. We couldn't come to them during our dissertation and be like, read this. Do you understand? So even though you're getting your friends to proofread your work and all that stuff, get your supervisor to proofread your work as well, like, because obviously they know what the hell they're doing. And get your supervisor to always read what you've done. Um, by the way, guys, I left a very important point out. You need to be careful as to plagiarism. Sorry, plagiarism is a thing, yo. And yes, I'm saying still references from this, like, I say still, but you know, <laughs> get references from this and get references from that and don't plagiarize yourselves like don't don't make the mistake of plagiarizing and those of you that don't know what it is that is basically copying word for word trying to ugh, 
it's, they, it's copying basically even though you are taking references but you, everything you put that isn't yours you need to you need to reference if you're not referencing it you're plagiarizing do you understand so boy it's so easy to get plagiarized and that can score you zero in your dissertation that's it you're done like it's done you failed so you need to be very careful when you're taking from this and taking from that don't plagiarize like and also with the whole selfish aspect of it listen i get it because some people copy your work so just mind who you're just showing your work and this and that too because listen don't send anybody i can't lie unless it's your g in it <laughs> i've heard this on crazy cases and this is like if you were selfish enough this shit would never happen boy i don't know do what you feel is comfortable but naturally speaking people don't just send other people their work like oh yeah look at what i've done like because in a desperation of trying to get that first or two one you can act out of character not you i'm saying the person being you taking someone's work can be like you know what let me just quickly just steal this bit or just this line and that similarity between your work and someone else's work is enough to get plagiarized obviously if it's findings that you both found like come on man like even when your supervisors are giving you dissertation topics and stuff they're going to give you reading and stuff to help you kick start so there will be similar ideas in people's topics and findings and stuff but there's a way that plagiarism works and it, it, when you get told you 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 plagiarized you did you get me you did listen it's camera dying season i'm let I'm, i need to buy a new battery guys you, i'm gonna keep to complaining about this until i buy a new battery but a new canon battery 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 and uh, i find battery so weird to say battery the battery you've got a battery Ugh. battery but battery is sounds like battery as in the crime um have you got a new battery the battery okay i'm gonna start saying battery because battery is weird because it's not battery no one's battering anybody <laughs> but yeah like a new canon battery is 84 pounds you guys i know for some of you that's small on you but guys a battery it's this small it's like this it's that small 84 pounds like are you being serious even some of my trainers don't cost that much because I shop in the junior section. So that's a banner. Anyway, as I said, dissertation time can be a very uh, tunnel vision, narrow minded moment in your life, right? So you forget to enjoy yourself. Some people go days without eating. Some people, they won't sleep. Some people, they won't bath. Some people, they won't do all these things. They won't see their friends. Some people forget that they have other assignments. <laughs> Some people actually forget that y'all still got exams <laughs> during my time of dissertation i still had exams i still had an essay to do i still had a presentation to do so you really can't ignore all your other assignments because the, the let me tell you the truth be told your dissertation can make or break your degree by the way it was 40 percent of my degree or or 60 percent of third year or something like that it's a huge percentage it's such a huge percentage so you can't <laughs> You need to put all your all into your dissertation. It's not a joke. That's a fact. Like, you need to put your all into your dissertation. However, every single chance you get to grab any more percentages, any more, what do you call those points? Credits, whatever, I don't know. Marks, grades, I don't care. Whatever you want to call it. Fam, let me put my lashes on. Then I'll come and talk to you guys properly. Bear with me. I get this station is important. I get it can be overwhelming. This is not the mascara I want to use. I get that, you know, you might feel like, oh my gosh, like I've got to put my all into it. Yeah, put your all into it, but your cup needs to run over, mate. You need to have more than your all available for this period of time. Like, you need to put your all into your dissertation and the rest into everything else. Do you understand? Or put 70% into your dissertation and separate the 30. Because let me tell you something, even if you're not bagging grades in the other stuff, your dissertation can really bring you up. Like, it can bring you up so much. But even if you're not bagging your dissertation, cool, let's say you get like a decent mid to high 2-2, but you score really highly, high 2-1, low first, in your other assignments, like your essays and your exams, you can still bring yourself to a decent 2-1. So... It's a game. You need to play it right. You need to. You can't just say, "Oh yeah, fuck these exams." Obviously, I've got my disorder in the bag. Because even if you feel like your decision is going so well, 
wouldn't it be so stupid to just like completely ignore um your <laughs> like ignore everything else that you're doing so don't just put all your eggs in one basket with this one but don't also don't put all your eggs in one basket with your other assignments i'm gonna just quickly give some advice on just being a third year in general i think that's all i want to say for your dissertation i'm not going to reiterate what i just said all of those things i just said guys like take it on board i'm telling you i'm telling you you can it's a game if you're just smart about it <laughs> anyway there's life after this whole you still have grad roles to 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 apply to i know third year is so much because you're doing all this and you're doing all that and you're applying for your grad roles and it's, it's too much but you don't want to finish university and you ain't got a job light up yo listen to me i am a graduate i have finished luckily i found work straight away am i working in exactly what i want to be working in no but i am using my degree i am doing it it's so much hard look let me quickly speak on you business accounting and finance i want i want i want math and math all of you dot there in it that working at the whole finance banking all that stuff that have that interest you guys need to from it's there for you you know it's there in black and white the bright network definitely sign up to that to be to be getting stuff like that prospects grad roles don't like just indeed yo like there's jobs out there for graduates just grad jobs grad jobs grad jobs you don't start searching obviously grad jobs some of them start straight away so i know you might not get that break but uh, listen okay no, no no get that break i can't like get that break um get that break you need a summer you need a summer man you need a summer but applying for grad roles is really important for those of you that, those of you that have it so predisposed to you getting that you people that have it you don't have it easy you business and accounts and the finance people there you know <laughs> i want deloitte <laughs> i want ey listen hsbc huh pwc everything is just there so definitely go and apply to those from now from last month i can't lie like from january but you know be applying you know the psychometric test let me tell you something let me let me let me plug you listen all those online tests if you can find someone to do it for you if that's what's stopping you from applying pay somebody it's not that deep like i don't know if this is this is this is real life and look, I, I i'm not here to give you advice on i told you that's why i give a university advice i'm not here to give you the whole the generic you know do things the right way fuck that the whole point is to get your foot in the door so if you know you're not really good at the psychometric tests pay somebody there's people that do it other math, math students and other people that are willing to do it for you you people that are math students that could be how you secure your bag put yourself out there look i do this i do these tests for people this much by test in it so you lot you lot apply be applying be applying be applying be applying be applying now my psychology criminology sociology all of us with this what do we call the social sciences crew we don't have it that easy do you understand i i the first time i've seen anything that is in regards to that, that looks like anything like a grad role or anything like that was when <laughs> i have to bring the accent in because this should be silly it was literally like a week ago it is february the 21st i just saw something called the think ahead program which is to be a mental health social worker which is, has nothing to do with what i want to do but you know <laughs> You, you can't get me like there isn't really much out there that you don't you don't you don't type in psychology grad roles i'm telling you psychologists sociologists all of us man there finding a job is going to be a struggle it's not going to be easy let me tell you this now you're not, you're not going to come out and you know yeah it's just a psychology role boom this and that i might do a separate life after uni video but just to put it out there life after uni is a scam yeah life after uni is a big scam and you need to make sure you you have sealed your basket so there's no holes in there so when you're putting eggs in there nothing's falling out make hay while the sun shines so right now pattern things look for roles like psychology students sociology students all of that all of that all of that that want to work in this field of mental health and all of that social health and it's getting really cold i keep looking at my window i think education is a very good way to just get in there you know what i mean just just get in there because even with the healthcare stuff like going down the healthcare route and trying to um trying to you know become a healthcare assistant all that stuff a lot of them i say you don't need experience but i feel like working in education gives you that quick experience because most time they don't need experience do you understand so it's i think it's a nice way to ease your way into it because i feel like for me personally i can't go into healthcare stuff that quickly because i really don't want to touch anybody <laughs> i don't want to um i'm not ready to do that i, I think that's not something i could have finished uni and jumped right into so 
I just went into education. Now I work in a social emotional mental health school. I'm using my degree. I work with students that have autism, depression, anxiety, ADHD. I even love a new disorder. It's when, it's, what's it called? Oh, it's opposing, basically opposing instructions syndrome. It's weird. So when a kid, you tell them, don't do this, don't do it. You tell them, do it, don't do it. I don't know if it's a new diagnosis, but I was just thinking, damn, <laughs> that's some new shit. But I love my job. I love my job. Like, I love what I do. So I think going into education just for a couple months, just to like work with, obviously go in the SEN department or SEMH, social emotional mental health or social emotional needs department of education. Don't just become a TA and like, a technology school. That's, for me, that's boring personally if that's what you want to do do that why am i talking so fast my camera's not about to die relax for you but yeah um or go into healthcare like try to become some sort of work in some sort of medical setting so go into the healthcare route just become a support worker all you do is just sit at home with the the person you need and you just keep them company or you might walk with them to the park and all that stuff because at the end of the day for us we have to further our education it doesn't end here like this undergrad if you just did a psychology degree and you're not planning to go further with it, you, you wasted your time. <laughs> okay, you did it. No, but you did. <laughs> I mean, you did it, but you did. You know, like, there isn't opportunities out there for you if you're not planning to gain experience to make you even credible enough to even go ahead and do the master's or the PhD. So I want to go and do a PhD, a clinical psychology doctorate. Hence why I'm doing the things I'm doing now. Those of you that have the clinical psychology dream, understand it's a climb. Do you understand? You're not going to finish uni, go straight and apply for your PhD. You're not going to finish uni, take a year out, go straight and apply for your PhD. you got to get some certain specific kinds of experience. Those of you criminology, I'm on sociology, you guys, I think if the think ahead scheme is something that is still there, go ahead for go go and apply to it. I don't know, I only saw it that last week, so I think they were, that was when they were recruiting for their wave of July. So now I'm releasing this video, it's too late because it, the, the, the date to apply was 16th of Feb and that was the, the deadline. That's gone now, but go ahead and look again, contact them because for me, that's the first time. So what it is, is that you, um, in your first year of doing it, it's basically a master's. In your first year of doing it, you qualify as a social worker. By the second year, you finish your master's in mental health social work and you can work. That's it. Do you understand? That's what, that's it. I always thought social workers, you got, you need, one, I thought you need, you need to have lived. <laughs> you need to have lived to be a social worker. I'm not even a mummy. I have no kids. How can I be going to, go into a woman's house, a 45 year old woman with her 70 year old sons trying to regulate how they live their lives? I felt like that was something I just, I, that's what I thought social work was. Hence why I haven't really met or heard from, um, young social workers. I don't really see it existing, but fam i feel like this scheme is really good and i contacted it's so funny it's such a coincidence somebody who was a mental health social worker connected with me while i was applying for this thing and you know he just basically told me that listen if you want to go down go down the psychology route and you don't want to do social work you wasting your time with this thing ahead program because that shit takes two years and you're gonna finish that or you're gonna still have to go and get ex like a couple years more experience so you can do your doctorate so he told me i'm wasting my time don't even do it obviously if i want to be a social worker that's great not want to go into probation all that stuff this is a great thing to just have in the bag it's a quick masters it's funded you get paid to do it like a 20k salary listen it's work so the thing i'll put links below those of you i'm gonna go back again to the i want i want i want ey i want deloitte <laughs> sorry I'm, i i i do i do this like as if you guys are nigerian as well but you guys are more into the business side of things yo um especially insurance sign up to the brokerage the brokerage especially now before you finish uni sign up to the brokerage because you're not a graduate yet so final year students and those of you if you are in second year you're watching this brokerage the brokerage i signed up to the brokerage in sixth form i did i worked for, i worked in the city of london for the city of london corporation i was a i was an intern for what the city the city surveying department yeah, what I did wasn't that crazy, but I, it's, it's on my CV till now. Do you understand? So even if I want to like just branch off into something that isn't mental health and I want to go down the whole, I don't know, if I was to do, if I was to go down the corporate side of things, I would go into HR. So let's say that's what, I don't know. It's there, in it? So I, at least I've worked, I've done some sort of something. So that's you even a sixth form. For you that are even a sixth form, if you are a sixth form while watching this video, the brokerage, get that work experience you get paid for it we would imagine being like 16 17 getting like 10 pounds something an hour that was lit i can't lie that was lit but um 
yeah so you get to work in the city you get to work with actual proper businesses like big businesses some people got it in banks like barclays hsbc um some people got it in other 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 companies like i don't know like my friend deborah deborah she worked in marsh fam that's a big insurance company like you guys like fam listen you want to go into tax and insurance you want to go into consulting you want to go into all this stuff the brokerage have so many opportunities this video is way fuller than i thought it would be the brokerage have so many i'm just talking fast with my camera i know my camera i don't trust this i don't trust it you got my son's gonna die anytime soon that's what i'm talking so fast but yeah um tax and insurance consulting hr all that stuff all that stuff all that stuff business management um junior analyst all of that rewards analyst all of that the brokerage so sign up to the brokerage and um yeah contacts I'm gonna just put there. I put the, all, all the links of all the things I need you. That I want you guys to like just go ahead and, you know, do. <laughs> I'll put the links in the description because I feel like sometimes you can be in this point and you don't even know where to look, and you might just be looking at one place. So, uh, bro, there's so many other things. But the Bright Network is where it's at for you. You, know, you lot that deal with that. I want money makers. I want. I want. I want finance. You, what I say? I want. That means you. That means you guys. You people that. So for those of you that don't speak my language, when I say I want, I want money making Mitch, that means them, you get me, you get me, buddy. <laughs> you know, it means you guys. You know, don't want to go down this path, like start looking for experience, work experience. While you're, uh, it's too late, I can't even say why you're at uni, because that, that would now be me giving advice for second years and that's not what this video is about. But those of you that are in second year, just put it out there, quickly get your experience in it. During the summer, make sure you pattern some sort of internship, something even if you're not uh, uh, even if you're not, you're not part of that i want money making finance people work in a prison you want to go into probation try working in a prison try get experience in fam there's so many things to get experience in man feck there's so many so just look just search for what your field and look for the experience there on google <laughs> the internet is there linkedin linkedin you lot dodges start you <clears throat> You lot better get a nice background, take a nice LinkedIn pic, it doesn't have to be a white wall, go outside a nice sun at a park, you start using your LinkedIn profile, it's only now that I'm utilising my LinkedIn profile, and even though my LinkedIn profile, it, oh, my window's open, I'm my window, one second, last point, this is the last point, it's so important, because when uni finishes, uni has finished, oh my gosh, camera's gonna die, oh my god no, what I want to say is, camera's gonna die. Oh my god, camera's gonna die. What I want to say is, party, 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 party. Enjoy your space. Don't run back to London or wherever you came from. Enjoy, enjoy that that freedom, that liberty of just being at uni. Enjoy university. Try to utilize it. When you finish university, enjoy your space. Go visit friends. Chill out. Sunbathe at the park. Go to motives. All of that. And when you're finished, when you're tired of your city, go back home. Don't run home because you're not going back to uni. You're not gonna have that freedom anymore. You're gonna be under your mom's roof, washing dishes for her and that. So enjoy your sanctuary while it lasts but guys i need to go my camera is about to die thanks so much for watching the video i hope it's helped i love you guys so much my new subscribers hi i'm body badger i'll see you in another video i'm rushing because the red light is flashing but i'm going to put the link in the description for all the things that are important and yeah thanks for rocking with me i hope y'all enjoyed this video Woohoo! okay bye mm -hmm.